Greetings, peoples of the interwebs. So it's been a little bit since I last uploaded anything, um, but I figured I would go ahead and post a little bit of a, um, yeah, I guess like vlog update video, whatever. Because um, last week I just got back from my New Zealand trip. Um, so I also wanted to kind of talk a little bit about my, uh, my experience in New Zealand because it was amazing. Um, so, uh, I mean, first off, like we filmed round trip airfare for under a thousand dollars, which is insane to find, uh, airfare that cheap for New Zealand. So obviously we had to take that opportunity and go. Um, and yeah, it, it was, it was incredible. Uh, even with, uh, New Zealand having experienced the cyclone of the century with, uh, cyclone, uh, Gabriel, um, and being hit with an earthquake all within like a week of our, <laughs> of our arrival, uh, it was still a blast. Um, so, I mean, granted, it was it was like a super long flight, like fifteen hours, uh, which is insane. Longest flight I've ever been on, and it was it was miserable, but well worth it for the uh, experience to go to New Zealand, which has been high on my list of countries to go to for years now. Um, mostly because of Lord of the Rings, because um, I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan, and you know that's where it was shot, so getting to, uh, so, you know, getting to see the natural beauty of New Zealand, like, in the movies, uh, was definitely a huge, um, reason for me to want to go, and then also just the natural beauty in of itself. Um, so basically, like, the first day we arrived, uh, it was pretty early in the morning, around, like, 8.30 or something like that, um, so obviously we couldn't check into, like, our hotel, because it was still too early, um, so we decided to go for a bit of a hike to, um, actually... I forget the name of the hiking trail we were on. Uh, so let me pull that up real quick. Uh, so it was around Mur Murray Beach. Um, the trail that led to that beach um, was about like 40 minutes or so outside of Auckland. Uh, so our original plan was to go to um, the Coromandel Peninsula, but it was like a two and a half hour drive from Auckland. And after a 15 hour flight, um, we didn't feel like being in the car for two and a half hours, uh, and granted it looks beautiful in Coromandel Peninsula and, uh, Cathedral Cove and everything, um, so I was a little disappointed we didn't get to go, but at the same time, that was just, you know, being cooped up for that long, and then taking another two and a half hour drive to, uh, you know, the Coromandel Peninsula, which I'm sure would have been worth it, but it just, that, that was a lot of traveling, um, so we opted for a shorter trip, or a hiking trip, uh, which was great to be able to, like, go for a nice hike, after such a long flight, you know, being able to, like, stretch my legs and everything, um, it was a beautiful day, uh, like, it was, it was just a great, uh, great first day, um, so by the time we got back to the hotel, you know, we originally planned to, like, you know, kind of rest, take a bit of a nap, um, before we went out for, like, dinner and drinks, um, but we were all passed out by, like, 5.36, because, um, again, long-ass flight, uh, and then after, you know, probably about, like, a two-ish hour hike, um, weren't hiking the entire time, but, you know, hiked a little bit and then went back down to the beach to just kind of hang out and, uh, just take in the beautiful scenery. Uh, so yeah, we, we were done, uh, and didn't wake up until, like, 6 a.m. the next day. Uh, woke up feeling very refreshed after, like, 12, almost 12 hours of sleep or however, however long it was. Um, and then the following day is when we went to Hobbiton, uh, which is around the, um, so stayed in Hamilton, so I think Hobbiton was about, like, an hour or so from there. I think actually close to, like, Matamata, I think is the nearest uh, town or village or whatever to, um, to, to Hobbiton. That was great. Uh, getting to see uh, the Shire and, you know, getting to take that tour um, and then getting to have a drink at the Green Dragon was just a great experience, especially for, again, me being the huge Lord of the Rings fan that I am and also I'm very much a Hobbit. Um, so that was great, getting to experience that. Uh, I felt like I was home. Um, a little disappointed that, um, you couldn't actually, like, so none of the houses in Hobbiton, you could actually, like, go inside. Uh, and actually the only door to, like, the Hobbit holes that could actually open was Bilbo and Ho uh, um, Frodo's house. Uh, but that door only opened just enough so that way when they were filming those scenes where, you know, people were coming in, coming in and going out, um, only open enough to where, you know, they could walk in, um, to get that shot, but there wasn't, like, it only went back, like, maybe five feet inside the door. So a little bummed out by that, um, but apparently they are actually 
building new hobbit holes uh, that will be like fully furnished that people can walk inside and you know uh, as a part of that tour. So again, slightly bummed that uh, we didn't get that chance. But uh, something said by the, like the end of this year, twenty twenty three, around like December, I think is when they were saying that like that should be complete. So you know, all the more reason to go back. Um, and so then after Hobbiton, I think is when. Um, that's that's about when we uh, like the cyclone was starting to kind of like get a little bit closer, um, and I guess funny enough when we were asking locals, um, you know, if we should be concerned or you know about the hurricane because on like when we'd be driving we'd be hearing on the radio it's like, you know, they're predicting cyclone in the century and stuff, um, but like all the locals were just kind of like, yeah, no, we're not too worried about the cyclone. I think we'll be fine. Everything's fine. Uh, <laughs> So it's like, oh, okay, you guys, you guys live here, so we'll, we'll take your word for it. Um, again, thankfully the cyclone didn't really affect us too terribly bad. Um, it did, my biggest, probably one, of, probably the biggest disappointment though with the trip is, um, so the day after uh, we went to Hobbiton, we were going to hike up Mount um, the Galruhoe? I'm pretty sure that is, like, a terrible pronunciation, but it's basically the mountain that they used for Mount Doom in Lord of the Rings. Um, really looking forward to that hike, because it was going to be, like, a six-hour hike, uh, so very long, but I was really looking forward to it. Um, but obviously due to the weather, because um, I think even even when there's not cyclones, uh, the mountain can experience, like, uh, all four seasons in, like, one day, because it's, you know, such high elevation, I guess, just the weather's kind of unpredictable. So, you know, in the best conditions, it's still, like, a very difficult hike. Um, but obviously with the cyclone, um, couldn't go, uh, go to that, uh, go to the mountain. Um, but we did kind of hike around, um, Tongariro National Park, which was great. Um, after that, though, that's when the weather, like, the following day, um, I think we are going to spend more time in Tongariro National Park, but, like, just rain all day uh and so we kind of like had to improvise we did like a glowworms cave which was really cool um and interestingly enough like the glowworms that inhabit those caves are only found in new zealand australia and then alabama of all places not sure how that happened um but it was still you know it was, it was a cool experience um and a cool tour uh really liked our tour guide and then um we, after that, we, we stayed in, um, oh, what is the name of the town? Uh, I forget the name of the town, but basically we were staying on Lake Ta uh, Taupo, which is this massive uh, lake that, was act that actually used to be a crater. Um, right, still it's a crater, just filled with water. Um, and um, so I was, I was curious when we were staying there, because it's massive. Uh, it's apparently like 123 feet in its like entire perimeter, and up to 610 feet deep. Um, so if you didn't know any better, uh, you would think it's, like, the sea because of, like, just how massive it is and, like, the waves. Um, and it was really cool, too, the house we were staying at um, was one, you know, right there on the, um, like, overlooking the beat, the uh, lake. Um, there's a little trail that we could walk down. Uh, it was about, like, a 10, 15-minute walk to the beach. Um, and obviously, since it was, like, you know, super cloudy and rainy, no one on the beach. So we just kind of, like, walked down there and just took in the beauty of the, you know, the surroundings. Um, but again, kind of disappointing that, like, the, since it was raining all day, uh, didn't really get to do a whole lot. Um, but we were staying in a really nice, um, uh, Verbo house, um, and there's, like, a shop, like, five minutes up the road. Uh, so, you know, we could just go up there, grab snacks, uh, tried a couple different wines, actually, because New Zealand's famous f uh, for wines. I think in particular they're white wines. So I had one, uh, called the Squawking Magpie. Bought it purely based on the name. Um, I think it was a Pinot Gris. Uh, and then I bought another wine called The Ned, which is Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, not a huge wine drinker, but, you know, New Zealand being uh, well known for its wines, uh, I like to try to try the local drinks, foods, all that stuff. Um, pretty solid wines. Um, and then a th the following day is when we uh, took our plane to the South Island. Uh, so drove back to New to Auckland to then fly to Queenstown. Um, left super early in the morning because the you know we kind of expected like the weather would definitely affect like um, you know the roads. Glad we did because uh, uh, yeah like when we woke up at the house we were staying in like there was no power got knocked out by the, the cyclone and just the terrible weather. Um, 
think we left around like 7, 7.30 a.m. Um, and didn't get back to Queen or Auckland until like 12.30. Um, I think normally it's about like a three hour drive from where we we're staying to um, to Auckland. Ended up being like a five hour drive just because we went one way for about half an hour before um, like just down trees, you know, couldn't pass it. Uh, so then turned back around, uh, drove another half hour back to kind of towards the town we, we were staying at. Um, and then kind of came into like more debris. Uh, I rolled a boulder off the road. Uh, from where there's like a little mini landslide and like tons of trees. So we kind of helped the locals, uh, a few of the locals a little bit with, you know, clearing trees and branches and stuff like that off, off the roads. Um, then eventually when we did reach uh, Auckland, you know, we were kind of concerned. Just it seemed like the debris and stuff like that left behind in the roads. We were kind of concerned because the, 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 the cyclone still hadn't like fully uh, like hit yet. Uh, I don't, or at least I don't think... Um, so, naturally, we were concerned that our flight might get delayed or canceled. Uh, so, basically, the whole time we're waiting at our gate, uh, we're hearing about like all these fl- uh, planes and flights being canceled, mostly to going, uh, you know, going to the South Island, because you know they didn't want to obviously fly in, uh, near the hurricane. Uh, so, anytime the inna- the intercom went off, we were just kind of like, okay, here it comes here's here's the announcement that our flight's been canceled. Um, then, like, all these other flights were getting canceled, so we were like, okay, this, this is looking promising. We haven't heard anything about our flight being canceled. Um, but eventually we switched to a different gate, uh, waited there for a while, and then went back to our original gate uh, until eventually, like, they, you know, we did... Our flight was delayed by, I think, like, two, three hours or something like that, uh, and did eventually get to fly to the South Island, uh, landing in Queenstown, which was a relief, because uh, the whole time we were in the airport, you know, we were kind of looking up things to do just to, you know, kind of expecting our flight to get canceled. It's like, okay, we got to find a place to stay tonight, and then also, like, what are we going to do in the meantime? All that stuff. But thankfully, you know, our flight didn't get canceled. It was a very smooth flight to, uh, to the Queenstown, and then stayed in um, uh, Twizel was the town we stayed in, um, which is a nice little mountain town, like, tiny population of, like, not even 2,000. Um, but really close to uh, Mount Cook National Park, um, so that, that's where we spent most of our time in Twice was, you know, kind of just stayed at a house there. Uh, it had some, like, you know, nice restaurants and stuff like that. And re- actually a really nice little town. Um, the Mount Cook National Park was, was just beautiful. Like, Hooker Valley was the first thing we did. Um, great, great trail. Um, got some really good pictures of Mount Cook off in the distance. Um, also, it was just, like, a really, really nice day. And then the following day we did Seeley Tarns, which is having a lot more difficult because it's almost like an entire, I guess, like a mile, like, all uphill steep incline um it's a little bit of a challenge but i'd I'd kind of been prepping for a difficult hike uh you know for for mount doom um so that kind of came in handy for uh, tv tarns uh which again great great views um from that hike so even though it was a little arduous to to get to that point uh the top of tv tarns um it, it was well worth the views and just Again, you can't really go wrong with New Zealand, wherever you're at, uh, from from my experience. Whether you're in the North Island, South Island, just all beautiful. Um, so then after a uh, couple days of good hikes in Mount Cook National Park uh, and staying in Twizel, we um, went back to Queenstown and then kind of stayed there for the remaining, I think, four days. Uh, which Queenstown was, uh, Queenstown was great. Um, we were kind of staying like more in the city centers. So, like, basically everything was in walking distance. Um, like two minutes down the road there's like a supermarket a gas station um and then you know no shortage of like restaurants um bars so we definitely spent a lot of time just kind of walking around exploring trying some of the different cafes bars restaurants um one of which i'd recommend if anybody uh watching this video is planning a trip to new zealand or plans on visiting um i definitely recommend some of the places i've mentioned before like tongariro national park is great um the Glowworms Cave, I forget where that was at exactly, but I'm sure you could just, you know, look it up. Obviously, Hobbiton. Um, and then um, Twizel, again, it's a nice little town, uh, especially if you like outdoorsy stuff. Uh, it's a, it's under an hour, like 40, 45 minutes away from uh, Mount Cook National Park. Uh, so, you know, pretty easy drive, very beautiful drive, too. Um, and also, just literally anything you can think of um like outdoorsy like new zealand is an outdoor person paradise whether it's like hiking kayaking paragliding uh skydiving uh, 
whatever you can think of, you can do it in New Zealand. Um, and no shortage of places to do that. Um, and so, um, so yeah, Queenstown um, was great. Uh, one of the restaurants I'd recommend is called Fat Badger. Uh, they've got like these delicious, massive pizzas. You can also get a whole like a bowl of beer. So naturally, I did that because um, where else can I get a bowl of beer? Uh, so, so that was nice. Um, and again, the food was really good too. And like a short walk from where we were staying. Uh, also, we ate at. Ferg Burger, which I think is Queenstown's like most famous restaurant, um, and next to Ferg Burger, they actually have a really good bakery too. Called um, it's just called like Ferg Bakery uh, or Mrs. Ferg Bakery or something like that. Uh, so I had a really nice a uh, venison and goulash meat pie, which the meat pies in New Zealand can't recommend enough. Delicious. Um, so, uh, but yeah, so Ferg Burger highly recommend. There will definitely be a line uh, if you ever do go there. Uh, I think we only waited in the line for maybe 20 minutes, uh, so not not terrible for, for Ferg Burger. Uh, I had a lamb burger. This place lives up to the hype. Um, so I was kind of not super concerned, but yeah, I guess there was a little apprehension because um, I'd watched a video of um, some people like, you know, who were uh, exploring around Queenstown and they ate at Ferg Burger, which they had to wait like an hour in line. Um, but so I was kind of, you know, a little apprehensive that, like, this place may not live up to the hype. It does. So if you're ever in Queenstown, go to Ferg Burger, wait in line however long you have to. Um, but again, also right next door, there's the bakery. And then next door to, the, to Ferg Burger, which is in the middle, there's also Ferg's Bar. So, you know, you can grab a drink while you're waiting or, you know, grab a coffee at the bakery while you're waiting. Um, so yeah, Ferg Burger, definitely would recommend that place. Um... And I, I don't remember the name of some of the other cafes and stuff like that we went to. Um, but Fat Badger and uh, Ferg Burger definitely two that I would highly recommend. Um, and there's an ice cream place. I think it's called like Patagonia Ice Cream and Coffee. It's like on the beach of uh, Lake Wakatipu, um, which we were also like maybe a 10 minute walk from from where we were staying. Uh, beautiful lake. Um, and we, we were kind of, we were originally going to take a. Um, flight to Milford Sound um, and then take like a little cruise um, around the area as well but unfortunately due to the weather that got cancelled so we, we did have a few setbacks um, then we're going to take like a wine and uh, like cru uh, like a wine and cheese eating cr uh, cruise on Lake Wakatibu in Queenstown that didn't work out um, we still ended up taking like a little uh, like six seater plane and kind of flew around Queenstown the, the, that general area which is really nice um, we did actually take a bike and wine tour of uh, like several different wineries uh, in the area which was really nice I think we ended up biking around like 10 miles um, and basically the whole thing is like you get dropped off in Arrowtown which is not too far away from Queenstown and basically you bike um, you know all across these trails and you hit up different wineries and breweries I don't know how many there are in total um, the first one you hit up is Gibston um, Valley. Um, so we had a, a flight of wines, uh, wine there, uh, all of which I, I, I like to varying degrees. Um, and there are you know, different kinds like whites and reds, rosés. Um, and then the next one we hit up was uh, Rockburn, which Rockburn was really nice. I really liked our um, server. I wish I could remember her name, but she was great with you know telling us like the information about like the different wines. All together we tried seven. Um, super informative um, and you know also kind of like told us about like the whole winemaking experience so kind of knew a little bit that went into it like you know obviously like the soil quality is a big factor in you know the you know vineyards and stuff like that but even like she was talking about like air quality uh, and like all this these other factors that I'd never even considered with the winemaking process so super educational uh, especially for someone who, like myself who isn't much of a wine drinker um, but really enjoyed all the wines that we had, uh, again, to varying degrees, but, like, all of them were pretty solid. Um, I would definitely drink them again. Um, so, yeah, if you do do the uh, wine and bike tour, which I would recommend, um, definitely hit up Rockburn. Rockburn is solid. Um, and then we also went to, there's one that was closed. I think it's called, like, Peregrine, because uh, it's a Sunday, and apparently, like, Sundays, a lot of things are closed, um, just because in New Zealand, that's, like, their rest day. Um, or something like that is kind of how I understood it um, so we actually only ended up hitting two wineries and then a brewery I forget the name of the brewery 
uh, and could have done more. Um, but like, that's the first time any of us had really done a whole lot of biking um, in a long in like several years. So we weren't really used to like sitting on a bike that long. And I don't know if you all have ever biked for extended period of times, but bike seats are not very comfortable. So our asses were super sore. Um, other than that, we we definitely could have like hit up probably at least like one or two more. Uh, or at least I, I feel like physically I could have biked uh, you know, a few more miles to like one or two more uh, wineries or breweries um, and had like a wine or a beer or something like that at each one. But man, I just could not sit on that bike seat uh, any longer. So we ended up biking back to the tavern, which is like the kind of de facto meeting place where the um, uh, company, I forget their name, basically like they drop you off at Airtown and then you, know, you can call them, they'll pick you up wherever you're at. Um, until 4.30 p.m., which is like the you know, de facto uh, pickup time in, uh, at the tavern, uh, which is actually right next to Rockburn. Uh, it's basically like, you know, if you did the whole the whole thing uh, and didn't get picked up early, they would pick you up at um, the, the tavern and, you know, drive you back to, to Queenstown. So that was really nice, and, and again, just kind of like getting to uh, bike for the first time in years, which is really nice outside of the uncomfortable seats. Uh, but also just, again, getting to, you know, bike on these trails, go to these different... Uh, uh, vineyards and breweries and just see like again more the natural beauty of Queenstown um, and the surrounding area of the South Island um, yeah it was it was great uh, cyclones and earthquakes included which actually thankfully the earthquake didn't affect us at all because that uh, happened in Wellington uh, which is towards the southern tip of North Island and at that time we were in the, the South Island that was when we were in Twizel. Um so thankfully it didn't affect us did feel really bad for the locals because uh, my God, uh, being hit with an earthquake and a cyclone within the span of a week uh, is rough. So, uh, yeah, if, if you can support, support New Zealand, do it. Because, um, yeah, they, they had a bit of a rough time. Um, but I think looking back like a few years from now at this trip, I think uh, even though the cyclone in particular like definitely like messed up some of our plans um i think that will i think i'll look back more fondly because uh, that just kind of it added to the experience um it kind of makes it more interesting that you know <laughs> we were in new zealand uh during the cyclone of the century and an earthquake uh, makes it sound a lot more exciting than what it, what it really was not to say that our new zealand adventure was not exciting because it was um but that, but again that definitely makes it sound a lot more um intense um, but yeah, it, it was a great experience. Um, highly recommend it. Uh, definitely one of my favorite places that I've been. Uh, the first non-European country that I've been to as well. Um, so it, it was such a great place. The locals were all super friendly. Um, and again, like the just the sights, regardless of where you're at in New Zealand, you're just surrounded by natural beauty F, basically in every direction. Um, and especially if you're, you know, if you like outdoors, what what better place in New Zealand to do any outdoor activity you can think of? Um, so yeah, it was it was amazing. Um, so that's the main thing I wanted to do is just kind of talk a little bit about my New Zealand adventure. Um, definitely a dream come true to visit Middle Earth. Uh, would love to go again, so that might be something I end up doing later on down the road, uh, assuming I can find round trip tickets for you know under a thousand dollars, which is great because normally it's around like two thousand plus. Um, it's, it's pricey, but you are basically flying to like the bottom of the earth, essentially. So, even honestly, even you know, two thousand is fair for that long of a flight and flying to again as close as the close to the bottom of the earth as you can get outside uh, without going to Antarctica. Um, and again, as as miserable as I was on that flight, uh, well worth it, uh, and would would definitely do it again. Um, it's also. Uh, I know I've mentioned, I know it's been a while since I last uploaded a uh, podcast two on the channel, so episode three that I did with my friend Elijah, that's still being edited right now, uh, so hopefully that'll be up soon, and then, uh, now that I'm back from New Zealand, um, I'm going to try to do, like, uh, like monthly recordings, or at least try to upload every month, um, maybe more, kind of just depending on, like, you know, scheduling with, like, whoever I have as my guest, uh, depending on like how much time I have, but ideally I'd like to record um, an episode 
or maybe even do multiple recordings like you know in, in a month or something like that but at least upload uh, the episodes of the podcast once a month um then also uh, if you want to see some of my uh uh new zealand adventure uh you can check out my facebook page vlogging with jake where i did a few videos um of just some of the stuff you know some of the natural beauty um and just kind of vlog about our, our time in new zealand um so definitely check that out give it a like or follow however that works um i'll try to also be more active on that page as well uh, and just kind of give like you know vlogs about whatever's going on with me um uh, whenever i'm not going off on some kind of adventure um but yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully, um, I've hopefully I've, I've talked New Zealand up uh, to to some people to make them make you all um, more willing to take that trip to New Zealand, which is well worth it. Um, or if you've been to New Zealand, let me know what you thought down below. Or if you're from New Zealand, same thing. Give your thoughts below. Uh, tell me places that I should visit the next time I come back. Uh, whether it be like bars, restaurants, cafes, uh, hiking trails, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, until next time everyone, cheers.